thing in 2014. And he said, remember, China is not our friends or not our ally. And he got like 300 retweets. It wasn't right. something big. He tweeted this back in 2014 or 2015. And then all of a sudden, you know, one day, everybody in the news is talking about 5G. And prior to that day, we weren't really talking about it. And all of a sudden, hey, we got to be the leader in 5G. I'm like, 5G? So I'm going to start looking at 5G. Okay, 1G, 2G, 3G. 1G is the regular phone back in the days. 2G is whatever. 3G is the iPhone, you know. And then 4G is the latest phone. And then now 5G is going to be changing the game. And most people go to, well, 5G is just a faster phone. Right? Because that's right. what initially, if we've always seen the G linked to a phone. Oh, right. my gosh, I can download a movie in 3.6 seconds right. now on Netflix, a two-hour movie, where before it was three minutes or six right. minutes, whatever, right? When you think about 5G, what do you think about of 5G and the capabilities and what it can really do to whoever that has access to it? That's a good question. So if you go back to 2007 and when the iPhone came out. The Seven, 2007. 2007. Mm -hmm. The top five in market cap were AT&T, General Electric, Microsoft, Exxon, Mobil, and Shell. Mm -hmm. Right? The phone comes out in, in 2007. We have, I had one, 3G network. It's not a very good, not a very good experience. 4G network comes out. By the way, we're the second country in the world to build a 4G network. Now you've got something, right? So when still Steve Ballmer laughed at Steve Jobs, said, we don't need one of those. When you took the, the platform, which was the iPhone, and you married it up to the 4G network, which, is, which was the pipe for data, and it was a fast enough pipe, now you could create the apps, services, of business models that in 10 years led to the top five in market cap being Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and Microsoft. Right? So the Chinese see this and they're like, ah. The platform and the pipe. So the smartphone, this thing, this iPhone, you know, which was the first one, then Android. So Apple and, Apple and Google, right, dominate the mobile platform that the app services and business models of that economy are built on. Now look at the iPhone. It's a hardware, software, tightly integrated, mm -hmm. closed-walled system like Steve Jobs liked, and the data was encrypted. Why was the data encrypted? Why did San Bernardino happen? Because Apple's an American company, right? They know you want privacy. They encrypt their phone. So now you've got the platform, and Android also went to, on to encrypt their platform. So both encrypted, right? So private devices. Take the cloud away from it. Just look at the device itself. Sure. It's meant to be a private device. Right. Why? It's American American um, product. Fast forward you know, to 2009, China starts to look at that, says, okay, we want to dominate the next level, right? Not, the, not just the technology, we want the app services and business models to be Chinese companies. And so Huawei gets hundreds of billions of dollars to develop 5G and ZTE. But then you have Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent. So they're, they're behind the Chinese firewall. They're protected. You can't have the fangs going in there. It's just the bats that control the e-economy within China. And then you start, at the same time you're developing 5G, right, the platform, and I'll get to that in a second, but you're also developing Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent. So now when you walk into, and you're starting to see the emergence of the 5G world in China. So you walk into a restaurant after you've ordered your food, and a camera picks you up, and you say, hey, David, welcome, uh, here's your food, right? So you're, you're starting to get the feel of what a 5G world is. And what is a 5G world? The platform is the network. So this is mobile computing paired with a pipe, 5G is computing and networking combined on the same platform. So this goes away. You walk outside your door and you say Uber. You don't get on your phone and say, I want an Uber. You just say Uber. Camera picks up your face or a microphone picks up you. Come on. That's what 5G is. That's what 5G is. And then the Uber shows up. The Uber, the, there's a camera on the car that sees you, knows who you are, don't have to ask you your name. You get in and you, you go to wherever you want. You get out and you go do whatever you want. So in this world, in the 4G world, this is a platform. It's yours, right? You don't want to be, built, you don't want to be part of that, all of that data. Remember we just talked about how do you influence society? You don't want all that data to be uh, out there about what you're doing. Just don't carry one of these, right? Just opt out. In a 5G world, you cannot opt out. Who owns the data? This, 
you could conceivably say, you lease the data on here you own. If you're getting Google services, you don't own that data. But in the 5G world, not only can you not opt out because it's built around the city, it's not in your phone anymore. Not only can you not opt out, you don't know who owns the data. Everything that you do can be watched. And for every person by 2022, there's going to be, uh, for every, uh, there's two cameras for every, for every person, there's two, two people for every camera in, in, in China by 2022. They have a billion right now on surveillance. Right. A right. billion cameras right. in China right With now. With artificial intelligence for facial recognition, right? So all of this is getting built right now in China. And who's helping them do it? Microsoft, Google, right? All of these companies that are, are, want to deploy this world into our country. So Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent, that's where the world goes. It goes from 2007, AT&T, GE, and, um, and Microsoft to the fangs to the bats, right? Who owns the pipes? Me as a B2 guy, the first thing I look at in the country is who's, where, where's the telecommunications? You've got to take that out, number one. But if rather instead of taking it out, you own or control it, so Huawei builds the pipes, then because you're behind um, the great firewall, you built the app services and business models of the 5G world. And you're, like I said, you're already starting to see that, you know, where your, your facial recognition is built into your interaction when you go into a restaurant or when you go into a store or when you go into a bank. You know, everything's about, you know, the device is connected. Then as you build the network, then those proliferate. So 4G network, 10,000 devices per square mile, 5G network, 3 million devices per square mile. You're not going to carry 12 smartphones. You may not even carry a smartphone. 10,000 to 3 million? 10,000 to 3 million. That's what 5G does. It, the connectivity explodes. Right? So that allows you to put devices literally everywhere that can make your life uh, more convenient or can track you. There's a bike in D.C. It's called Mobike. Have you seen these things? They're silver and orange. Look out for them next time you're in D.C. They're silver and orange called Mobike. They had them when I was in, in 2016 when I get to uh, Beijing. You take your phone, and by the way, I took, my, I took a phone, right, a, to a phone that I threw away when I got home, and I had said, You load, threw it away when I you threw got it away home. when I got home. Load all the apps on it that a Chinese person has so I can understand what they do. You never have to carry a wallet. You never have to carry a key. It's all done on your phone. You can pay any, anybody anywhere for anything, and, and they do. 900 people uh, are on WeChat, and they spend 90% of their time in app doing things, or, you know, ordering airline tickets, buying food, whatever you want. You can have anything you 900 want. 900 people or 900 million 900 people. million people. Okay, so let me, let me uh, explain to you how, how effective what they built is. I have one of the guys working for me on one of these Mobikes. Now, the Mobike is it's just parked there in the street with a lock on it. You go over, you hit a QR code on your phone, it unlocks the bike, you get on it, you ride it, and you lock the bike. Okay, so where does that data go? You, they know it's you. You got on that bike. You went to locations. Okay, so or you went to a location, so that data is, is available. So I have one of my guys. He um, gets on a mobike, rides somewhere, has his iPad in, in the basket, gets off the bike, comes back to the embassy, and realizes, ah, oh, I forgot my iPad. Goes into the, the regional security office's office and says, I forgot my iPad and my bike. Calls a uh, local public security bureau. And those guys call the guy that's got his iPad on his phone, on his cell phone, and say, can you bring the iPad back to the embassy? That's how wired Beijing is right now.